It was quite literally a signature moment for the country of Barbados today as it completed another step to ensure unfettered access to potable water for its citizens through a Green Climate Fund supported project. Water is the single most important resource worldwide, but every year, drought and flooding, the effects of climate change, have been threatening its people. The island nation, unlike Belize, is a water-scarce country, and so, along with the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, the Water Sector Resilience for Sustainability in Barbados project was birthed. The board of the Green Climate Fund approved a 50 million US dollar project uh, to build the water resilience of, the, of Barbados. And so two days later, the Green Climate Fund and the five C's um, signed what is called the Funding Activity Agreement that governs the implementation arrangements between the Green Climate Fund and the five C's. But because the five C's work in Barbados with the Barb Barbados Water Authority, and they were, are responsible for some of the activities in the project, we now needed to sign an agreement with the Barbados Water Authority. Um, the record for getting this done within the GCF has been 35 days. And, and today, uh, we have done it in fewer than 30 days. So what that means now is that we are getting uh, to the point where we can now get the first disbursement of money, which is also going to uh, break a record in terms of the time it takes between the approval of projects and actually getting money in the account so that the projects can start. The project, which is repurposing wastewater, includes an energy component to ensure that even during disasters, residents will maintain access to clean water inside their homes. There is also an agricultural aspect that will ensure food security. The price tag is in the millions of US dollars by way of funding via the GCF, a grant from the five C's, an investment by the Barbadian government. We want to uh, share the experience and the expertise that the five C's uh, has in delivering over a hundred million US dollars for the government of, and people of Barbados. We can do this for Belize, we can do this for Jamaica, we can do this for many other CARICOM countries um, because all of us are experiencing uh, very similar effects from climate change. The Caribbean includes eight of the top 30 countries battling water security. And projections are that the region will continue to get dry, with Belize seeing 35% less rainfall by as early as 2050. With the modality being used by the government of Barbados already greenlighted by the GCF, other CARICOM states are looking at the possibility of replicating some aspects of the project in their respective countries. Jamaica, Belize and others have already been engaged, and while Belize has vast amounts of inland water sources, there is significant interest in the available opportunities. For us in Belize, definitely it is a, something that we have to also address. Now, we have a different situation, it's a different country. We have large uh, sources of water, uh, especially from our mountains, uh, our aquifers, and um, our watersheds. But we do encounter problems in certain areas. We have the northern part of the country, which suffers on a yearly basis with uh, a lack of water. Naturally, they get less water per year from rainfall. Even though we have these sporadic events because of climate change, generally they have less water than the Cairo district, uh, than, than Belize district, and certainly less than the, than, than the southern two districts. So they also use water for agricultural purposes. That's where the sugarcane industry is. But orange oil corozal also produce a lot of fruits, vegetables, and agricultural crops. So there is a need for water for agriculture, for human use, for industry. For context, energy is needed to pump water to your homes. And so, as recently experienced during Hurricane Lisa, shortly after power was interrupted, water was also lost. It's about becoming energy efficient and ensure water and food security. What happens to the Cairo district when we have a flooding event? We have several villages that are located along the Belize River, and they go for 
six weeks, two months at a time without being able to access potable drinking water because these villages get water directly from the river or sometimes from wells that are close to the river but they're also contaminated, it's dirty. How can we look at reducing the energy cost for supplying this water? Well, we have to start to look at renewable energy sources. Uh, solar, we have a lot of sunshine, we have nine, ten months of the year where we can surely uh, harvest a lot of uh, energy from the sun. So that's one area that we'll have to invest in. Minister Christopher Koyi and the NDA, and as well as the ministry responsible for climate change, has already approached the five Cs on working on a project in San Pedro Bergriski that will look at how we can uh, use wastewater, reuse it and recycle it um, for use on the island to decrease uh, the demand on, on potable water uh, on the island. So in addition to that, we've also agreed that we'll be working on a $100 million um, in investment in two 50 million tranches to help to build the resilience of all of these um, municipalities to the effects of climate change. And so networking continues as the Belize delegation forges partnerships in an effort to ensure that Belize is resilient against the impacts of climate change. Reporting for COP27 from Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt, I am Dwayne Moody for News 5.